He was Matt Welsh. Um, and um, this is Matt Welsh's. Uh, so Matt Walsh has a critique of Andrew uh, Tate that's similar to mine, although he's more sympathetic to Andrew Tate because Andrew Tate is against the left. And anything that's against the left is good. All right. I know lots of world champions and all kinds of things who don't have, who lack self-esteem, particularly in a physical sport. It, it, again, not what self-esteem is. So here's Matt Walsh. Uh, this is his, uh, I'm not giving you his critique of uh, Andrew uh, Tate, although it's pretty good. I'm, I'm focusing here on his um, alternative. Yes. Men should reject the programming that our culture wants to subject them to. Yep. Uh, programming which seeks to neuter and feminize them. Yes, yep. they should yes. work hard. They should take care of their minds and their bodies. Yes. Yes, they should strive for success, including financial yes. success. But a life of hedonism and materialism and luxurious wealth, remaining unmarried while sleeping with a dozens of different women and so on, is not the ideal to strive towards. I, I agree with all of that. I agree with all of that. It's not the ideal to strive towards, and it's, and it's a recipe for a disastrous life. It's a recipe for, for, for uh, uh, you know, for unhappiness, for unhappiness. And it's, again, motivated by a hole within you that you're trying to fill with superficiality. Rather, what men are called to and created for, and the only sort of life that will be truly happy, that they'll find true happiness and joy in, is a life of service as... So here's the false dichotomy. Uh, well, protector just... and provider. So here's the false dichotomy presented. Andrew Tate, shallow and so on, but Andrew Tate is, represents here, man seeking his own desires, man seeking his own self-interest, man doing what's good for himself. And that is bad, says religion, says Matt Welsh, says conventional morality. What he really should be seeking, what he really should be seeking is service. It's altruism. It's service to others. And indeed, the definition of masculinity is protecting others, serving others. That's the essence of masculinity for Matt Welsh. And when you have this version and you have the left saying it's all toxic, don't be man, don't be a man, then what you're left with is, well, I'll just be a hedonistic nihilist. By the way, Ashton, I don't believe that everyone who's not an objectivist doesn't have self-esteem. I think a lot of people out there have self-esteem. Steve Jobs had self-esteem. Steve Jobs, I think, had real self-esteem. I think a lot of businessmen have a lot of self-esteem. I think Al Andrew Tate has no self-esteem, has negative self-esteem. So Andrew Tate is rejecting the altruism that Mount Welsh presents. But instead of adopting a, uh, a, a self-interest consistent with human nature, a self-interest anchored in reason and rationality, He adopts a, you know, hedonistic nihilism that is just self-destructive. What's bad? What's wrong with existential nihilism? It's destructive. It's the end of civilization. It's, um, it's, it leads to the destruction of your own life. It leads to having a horrible, pathetic existence. It lacks happiness. And it's destructive for human life. That is, you cannot build a civilization around it, and you cannot build a life around it. You are, it's in every dimension, both as an individual and a societal level, it's destructive. That's the problem with it. Steve Jobs rejected part of his family. He wasn't, it wasn't the fact that he was rich that it gave him a self-esteem. Just watch videos of him. He had pride. He had confidence. He had understanding. 
He was a man of the mind. Ashton Ayn Rand explicitly wrote about Andrew Tate like people and specifically said they don't have self-esteem. And I, you know, I should have got the quote from her, but, uh, you know, we can, we can probably, uh, we can probably find it. Um, let's, uh, let's see if, uh, if we can, um, here we go. Here's, here's a quote from Ayn Rand that relates to this, right? Sex is one of the most important aspects of man's life and therefore must never be approached lightly or casually. A sexual relationship is proper only on the ground of the highest values one can find in a human being. Sex must not be anything other than a response to values. And that is why I consider promiscuity immoral, not because sex is evil, but because sex is too good and too important. Now, let me see where, because I know there is, let me see if I can find the section on self-esteem. Here we go. The man who despises himself, the man who despises himself, tries to gain self-esteem from sexual adventures, which can't be done because sex is not the cause, but the effect and the expression of a man's sense of his own value. The man who thinks that wealth comes from material resources and has no intellectual root or meaning are the men who think for the same reason that sex is a physical capacity which functions independently of one's mind, choice, or code of values. They think that your body creates a desire and makes a choice for you just about in the same such way as if iron ore transformed itself into railroad, uh, railroad rails of its own volition. Love is blind, they say. Sex is impervi imp impervious to reason and mocks the power of the all philosophers. But in fact, a man's sexual choice is the result of the sum of his fundamental convictions. Tell me what a man finds sexually attractive, and I will tell you his entire philosophy of life. Show me the woman he sleeps with, and I will tell you his valuation of himself. That's good. Show me the woman he sleeps with, and I will tell you his valuation of himself. What does that say about Andrew Tate, given the women he sleeps with? No matter what corruption he's taught about the virtue of selfishness, selflessness, sorry, sex is the most profoundly selfish of all acts, an act which he cannot perform, on, uh, perform for only any motive but his own enjoyment. Just try to think of performing it in, in, in a spirit of selfless charity, an act which is not possible in self-abasement, only in self-exaltation, only in the confidence of being desired and being worthy of desire. It is an act that forces him to stand naked in spirit as well as in body and to accept his real ego as a standard of value. He will always be attracted to the woman who reflects his deep, deepest vision of himself, the woman whose surrender permits him to experience or to fake a sense of self-esteem. Fake a sense of self-esteem. That's Andrew. Love is our response to our highest values and can be nothing else. I, I'm not quoting her as the authority, but since... Uh, Ashton, uh, you know, uh, was claiming that Ayn Rand would not call for it. Um, here it is. No, I'm not saying that anybody's an objectivist does not have self-esteem. Again, I'm saying that uh, people like Andrew Tate who sleep with women who have no objective value, um, have no mind, that are not that are nothing, have no self-esteem. That's what I'm saying. And I'm saying that he doesn't have self-esteem. He has a, a measure of self-confidence in a particular context, um, but he has no self-respect. And you can't, without self-respect, you can't have self-esteem. Self-esteem is not just about confidence. It's about more than that. And if you read Ayn Rand, uh, did James Taggart have self-esteem, even though he ran a, a railroad and was CEO and dealt with politicians and was in the, all the highest realms of so-called power and everything. No, Ayn Rand rejects the idea that he had anything like self-esteem. Anyway, 
uh, that this is for a show on self-esteem. Uh, and, and we can ask, I mean, it would be a good topic to ask Gina about self-esteem, uh, who has self-esteem and what self-esteem constitutes. So note the, 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 the kind of juxtaposition. You can even serve, be a be protector and a husband. The only option is get married or sleep around. And, and, and have kids, get married, have kids, have a family, serve. All of those notions of masculinity are wrong, wrong. And in the 21st century, whatever definition we come up with for masculinity has to take into account, well, in any time, the, the world of the mind, one's competence, and yes, there is a sense in which uh, the masculine is the physical. There is a sense in which masculinity is linked to testosterone. But how that is, that's what needs to be worked out. But it's certainly not about either sleeping around or leading a conventional married life of sacrifice and selflessness. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.